Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are introducing the concept of distributed loading on structures and statics. So if you imagine here, we have this beam that's 10 meters long and it's simply supported and it's got this red block on top that weighs 200 kilonewtons. Um, this block is of uniform material, so it's not like it's heavier on one end than the other end or anything like that. Uh, and basically what's happening with this, unlike a single point load, uh, this block is exerting a constant pressure, and in, in a 2D problem, it's really just a linear pressure, uh, but its 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 weight is distributed along the length of the beam. So the way that we would draw the free body diagram is like this, where we get all these red arrows pointing down, and these represent the distributed load that's caused by this uniform weight across the beam. And uh, we know that it's 200 kilonewtons. So the way that the units that we write a distributed load is, uh, is, is kilonewtons per meter. So we'll call this W. And uh, if we know that it's 200 kilonewtons uh, spread across 10 meters, then this is just going to be 20 kilonewtons per meter. Right, so if we went one meter across, we would have accumulated 20 kilonewtons. If we go another meter, we'd accumulate another 20, so we'd be at 40. And if we go the whole way across, uh, 20 times 10 meters, we get that 200 kilonewtons that is the whole weight of this object. Now, if we want to solve for the reactions here, Ay and By, what we do is we will take the sum of forces in the y direction, and we know that we have 200 kilonewtons pushing down. We can either see that from here, or if we weren't given a diagram with a, an actual object and we were just given the distributed load, well, we would just do 20 kilonewtons, uh, 20 kilonewtons per meter times 10 meters is 200 kilonewtons. So we know that we have 200 kilonewtons in the downward direction, and uh, and then we, that's going to equal Ay plus By because they're both going to be pointing up to resist that plus By. Now. It's pretty obvious here that this is totally symmetrical. So Ay is uh, the the, real, the resultant, no, the reaction force here, Ay, is going to carry half of the weight, and By here is going to carry the other half of the weight because it's symmetrical. Obviously, if this was, if this block was only on one side, then that side would be carrying more weight. But because of the symmetry, it's quite obvious that Ay is going to equal 100 newtons, uh, sorry, kilonewtons, pointing up, and also By is going to equal 100 kilonewtons pointing up as well. But let's talk a little bit about um, what we would do if we would solve this using the sum of moments equation. So we have the sum of moments about A, um, and so A, Y won't cause a moment about point A because it's passing through, but this distributed load uh, is definitely not the whole thing isn't passing through this point, and by definitely will cause a moment as well. So by I know will be uh, the moment caused about point A by by is by times. Actually, let's write this in. It's 100 kilonewtons. Kilonewtons times 10 meters, uh, and this is going to have to cancel out the moment caused by this distributed load. I know the entire load itself is 200 kilonewtons, and again, if you're not given the drawing with an object on it, you know that the entire load is 200, uh, 20 times 10. So we have 200 kilonewtons. And this, this has to pass through, this basically has to be represented by a resultant force that passes through somewhere. So we'll just put x for now, because I don't know where that is. Now if we divide this out, we have uh, 100 times uh, 10, we have 1,000 kilonewton meters. over 200 kilonewtons. Uh, that's going to give us x, and that's going to be simply just, uh, that is 5 meters. All right, and now that's really interesting because that is exactly halfway along the beam, that's 5 meters. And But what's, what's most interesting about that is that 5 meters, that's exactly the x component, or the x coordinate of the centroid that we've been calling basically uh, x bar in the last couple of videos. And if you imagine, because this beam is really, it, it is uniform, so the left half weighs exactly as much as the right half, so the left half is 100 kilonewtons, the right half is 100 kilonewtons. If you were to kind of put your finger here or something to object to kind of balance it, like a little pinhead, uh, directly below the centroid, it wouldn't tilt either way because that is the center of mass where, all, where basically all of the mass is acting through. 
Um, so that's why these reactions, even though it is distributing this sort of pressure, this uh, distributed load across the whole beam, uh, when it comes to using the moments or using the, uh, the, the total weight exerted by the distributed force, uh, in the moment equation, that it uh, you use the the location of the centroid of that shape uh, to place the resultant force. Uh, so if it's if it's not symmetrical and we can't just pick these out right away, then that's what we have to do is we use the resultant, put, pass the whole weight through, and then we use that to solve for the reaction forces. So let's do that. Let's actually look at a different example here. We have a very similar problem, uh, but we're saying now we just have a 50 kilonewton block that's only on one half of this same beam. So when we go and draw our free body diagram of this, it's going to look something like this. Actually, you know what, let's keep the same colors here. So it's going to be the beam is there and the, the block here is exhibiting, or sorry, exerting its, uh, its distributed force down like this on the beam for the length of the block itself, which is five meters. And in this case, 50 kilonewtons divided by five meters is 10 kilonewtons per meter, right? This is a, this is a different problem, uh, but this is a distributed load of 10 kilonewtons per meter. Let's put in some more arrows there just to make it look fancier. And uh, just because I'm doing this by hand, uh, just for demonstration purposes, because when we, uh, I'll make them all exactly the same height. Uh, you'll notice in your textbooks and stuff, they're all exactly the same height just to keep it clean. And then uh, let's draw on our reaction forces here. So we have AY and we have BY. And you know what I'm gonna do also, I'm just gonna separate us out here just to make sure that we don't get these two problems mixed up. We got that little divider in there. All right, so uh, when we wanna go ahead and solve for AY, uh, AY and BY, what we wanna do here is we'll start with the, uh, the sum of forces in the y direction. So we have the sum of forces in y, and we know we have 50 kilonewtons acting down, and, and that has to cancel out uh, what we have, a y and b y. Otherwise, this object would have the tendency to translate in the upward or downward direction. Um, now. We, uh, looking at this, it's not uh, it's not symmetrical, so I don't I can't just say oh well 25 is uh, supported by 25 kilonewtons is taken here and 25 kilonewtons is taken here. I do know that more will be taken here just based on practice, and less will be supported by B. But I don't actually know what those numbers are. So the way that we do this is we start with a sum of moments equation. So the sum of moments about A, and uh, knowing that the 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 centroid of this object is located 2.5 meters along because that's half of five. What we can do is I'll see that this is 50 kilonewtons. So we have 50 kilonewtons uh, times 2.5 meters. And this has to get balanced out by the only other thing that's causing a moment about point A here. And that's uh, this force BY. So we have that force BY times that distance, the perpendicular distance to the line of action of that force, and that's 10 meters, just like that. And now we can solve this, and it'll actually just give us, it'll return us uh, the, the force here. So it's five times 2.5 is, uh, that's uh, 125 divided by 10 is, that's going to give us 12.5 kilonewtons is equal to by. All right, and then we just plug that back into here, so we get 50 minus 12.5 is going to give us uh, 37.5 kilonewtons for AY, right? I just plugged it back into this equation. So there we go, we see that this AY is equal to 37.5 kilonewtons, and BY is equal to 12.5 kilonewtons. And there we go. So the the last couple of videos we were looking at trying to find the location of centroids of simple shapes. Obviously with rectangles it's quite easy because they're right in the middle. Um, but we use that centroid uh, in the moment, the sum of moments equation when we're solving for other reactions uh, on these objects. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, join me in the next video and we'll do an example with some triangles 
and uh, and it'll be quite similar. You'll see, but using the center of uh, using the centroid, you'll see is uh, it's really important when we're talking about triangular distributed loads, or even uh, we'll get into some like parabolic shapes and stuff like that. It gets a little bit more complicated.